before I jump into this topic, what I really want you to do is to think about what's going on here. So group A, they take the mass of a container containing sand plus the empty container itself. Then they subtract what the empty container was and they get this, they get 1.222. Now another group, group D, they come up with the same idea. So they have an empty container they have a mass of the container plus the sand. They subtract that empty container and they get 1.1. Now there's a problem here. The actual for that, if you do this out, is 1.00. Your calculator is only gonna tell you 1.1. It's gonna round that off for you because the zeros in a calculator don't mean anything. However, for us, what we really have to do is ask between that 1.1 or that 1.0, which one is giving us the best picture? And truthfully, it's going to depend on the numbers in that equation. So in our case, we have, look at all these digits. We have four here, we have four here, and I'm only getting two on this side. So if we're really talking about all these things called uncertainty, which we talked about in class, we have to really pay attention to what the numbers are actually telling us. So we have to consider something that a lot of scientists call significant figures. And significant figures are used to determine how accurate our data is. So there's two different theories, right? There's accuracy. Now accuracy is how close to the center of the bullseye can you get? Where precision is your grouping, right? So all of my groups are nice and close over here. So if this one has a little less precision, right? There's a little more space between those X's, but they're nice and close to the target. That's accuracy. Now precision here, is where they're all real nice and close, but it doesn't matter how close they are to the target, it just matters that they're consistent. They're getting a similar measurement every single time. So to identify sig figs, there's a few rules. First one is nice and easy. Any non-zero, well, that's gonna be significant. So that's our 5.134. So each one of these, there's no zeros. So each one of those are significant. There's four significant figures here. This is the abbreviation, sig figs. So when we get to zeros though, only sometimes. Sometimes they are significant. And these are how you identify it. So if they're trapped zeros, so if it's a zero in between any of those numbers, that, those are gonna be significant, right? So these are combinations. They have the whole numbers and they have some zeros stuck in the middle. So think about how many there are, right? So this one right here has three, right? There's a trap zero. I said those are significant. There's two whole numbers. So we have three sig figs. We have two whole numbers here. We have two trap zeros. We have four sig figs. And lastly, two whole numbers, zero right in between them. Those are also going to be significant. So we have three there. Now another type of a significant zero is a trailing zero, and this is the important part, with a decimal, right? So here's some examples for you. So we have 4.0, right? So that decimal point makes that zero significant. We have these two here after the three, which also there's a decimal point here, so we gotta be careful, because those two are gonna be significant. And then lastly, this one over here, decimal point, zeros at the end, those become significant. So we have uh, two sig figs here. So this is two, right? Uh, this one's gonna be three, right? We have that whole number. We have those two zeros with that decimal. And this one right here is four, okay? And we'll see why, that, why we need to know the amount when we start doing some math with these things. But I do wanna caution you. So first, if there is not a decimal place, these zeros are no longer significant. So if this was just 40, there would be one sig fig. There's only one thing. There's a trailing decimal, uh, trailing zero, but there's no decimal point. So therefore it wouldn't be significant anymore. And another type that, this one's the one that trips people up the most, I think, leading zeros are never significant. So let's look at some examples of those real quick. So we got uh, 0 0.0012. That is how many sig figs? Think about it. We got 0 0.7, and we also have this. Turn on, uh, pause the video for a second, try to figure it out on your own. 
And if you did and you've answered, we have two sig figs, right? All those leading zeros are not significant. We have two whole numbers, which are. So we're going to have two. We have a leading zero, never significant. One number here, one whole number. We have one. And we have all of these leading zeros and a 314. Those are also going to be significant as well. So, so really, these are the main rules. And if you can stick to these, you're going to do pretty well. So try this one out on your own. What I want you guys to try to do is to try to figure out what numbers are significant and how many are there, right? So pause for a second and let's figure this out. And if you've already paused, here comes the answer. So look at all of this information that I'm getting from this number. There's a leading zero that's not significant. A whole number, always significant. A trapped zero, always significant. Another whole number, always. And then we have this trailing zero, so we check. There's a decimal point, and they are always significant. So if you're totaling those up, we get four sig figs. So if you're having trouble with this or you're struggling a little bit, continue to try the practice. There's the practice that will be posted in our classroom, which will also have the answer key. You can also sign up for um, extra help with me, so come check out an extra help. And then lastly, if you're really struggling with this, uh, watch the video again, try it, and then come and talk to me because I'm going to help you get through this. All right, so we'll talk to you soon.